Welcome back to yet another reveal in our red brick redo. Do come in, please do come in. Today, we're gonna dive in and check out the kids' bedrooms and bathroom. What did we do for this? Well, we took the kids' rooms and we did a shimmy, shimmy, move it all around. So this is one of the five rooms okay. that is a playroom, sort of. Anybody use this? Not so much. This upper floor has five bedrooms and three bathrooms for two kids and one mom. So mom stayed where she started and the kids both moved rooms. Why you ask? Well, nobody was feeling particularly attached to their existing room. And I wanted to make sure that the final placements for these kids' rooms had the best amenities. And in my view, best amenities are windows and closets and the best overall space for setting up rooms that will work for them for the long haul. So first, let's check out Sam's room. So Sam's room used to be Gemma's room and it has two windows. The nice thing is it's towards the back of the house, so it's nice and quiet and private. And what we decided to do for Sam's room was all things monochromatic. You're wondering, how to make a monochromatic scheme work? Well, let me show you how we attacked it here. Choice number one was the wallpaper. It's an all over matte pattern. And what I like about it is it's not too high contrast. It has dark charcoal gray and kind of a graphite tone, but it's not too high contrast with the black and the white. And that's something that I'm always thinking about if I'm working with a darker palette. I wanna make sure that it doesn't feel too jumpy and aggressive when it's done. We still want this room to feel calm and we want it to feel really welcoming. I mean, this is where a young boy needs to come and go to bed and unwind at the end of the day. So we don't want it to be too frenetic feeling. And I think that when layered all together, this room really does have a feeling of calm, which is a good end result. Let's look at the drapery fabric. This is sort of what I would describe as a mid-size print, and I have used this pattern before. This is what is on our dining chairs at the cottage. What I like about this is it has a bit of texture to it. So the map wallpaper has more of an old fashioned feel. It's supposed to feel like a historical atlas reproduction. And then there is a softness to the way that the fabric has been printed and this texture is rendered in the pattern. To me, this sort of feels like a shell pattern. And I really like that as it weaves into the room. Let's look at the rug. This is a flat woven wool kaleem and it is the darkest thing in the room but there's still a lot of light ground overall. So it's got some movement, some color variation, and it just feels natural and it's soft underfoot. Next, we went to Unsplash, and I've talked about this in other episodes. Unsplash is a royalty-free download service for photography. So you can search and find any image that you're looking for, you can download it, and then you can print it for your own use. How awesome is that? Sam loves travel and loved the idea of having some fabulous wild nature photographs hanging on the walls now. Monochromatic, it's all things black and white. The beds, these are charcoal gray twin size beds. They go along the walls here in a kind of L-shaped pattern. So the key when I'm setting up a kid's room is, in something like this, you wanna leave the maximum amount of floor space available. I don't know if you remember, but the first time I came to visit the house, I went looking for a gecko in a cage. The gecko is actually not in here right now. Okay, so well, I'll stop looking. <laughs> you said, here we have a gecko. I'm like, here, gecko, gecko, gonna gecko. Fly. I'm not that familiar with geckos. I'm looking in the cage. Apparently there was no gecko in the cage. There was just a cage. Now, the gecko has moved out of the house and two gerbils have now moved in. So Sam's room has, this is a, a perfect boy's room. He has some little furry friends cohabitating in here with him. A little finishing touch accessory there as brought in. We always like to make sure for kids' rooms that they love their room and they feel comfortable and that they have that opportunity to add their own hit of personal expression because that's what really makes it feel like their own cozy little nest and that's what's super important to me. 
Of course, storage has been a key factor throughout all of these rooms. And as you know, when I design a kid's room, I am not looking for juvenile furniture. I don't care how young or old the child is. I'm looking for solutions that are gonna stand the test of time. So this is a piece of furniture that could easily be sitting in a front entryway or in any principal room in the house, yet here it is in Sam's room. It combines walnut and also a zinc finish and has a stone top so it's super durable. Even little boys need to have a mirror. They may not be really interested in looking at the mirror now, but that will change into the future. And I like to design it once and have all of the solutions sorted and done. When it comes to pillows, we wanna have a little bit of softness on the bed. We don't want this room to be over accessorized, but I like to think of creating a cozy spot where a kid can curl up and feel like this is their place, their zone. And I'm pleased to report that now that Sam has had the use of his room for three months now, apparently, it's a thumbs up. Want to see Gemma's room? Okay, let's hop next door and let's check out Gemma's room. So Gemma's room originally was a completely underutilized zone. It gets amazing light. So this faces southeast in the house and formerly it had an unused dollhouse. This is more like a museum now. Okay. Of the children's past lives. And because she really wanted a queen size bed for her room, I thought this room was better suited because of the layout of the windows. Now I know what you're gonna notice is, you are gonna notice something and you can't help but notice that the bed is sitting directly in front of the window. And if you were thinking, huh, why, how, what? This house has bedrooms that are set up in a very tricky way because of the windows. There is a large window smack in the middle of both the south wall and the east wall. There is a door in the north wall and the west wall. So in case you think I put the bed in the wrong place, I tried all of the options and I can guarantee you this is the best place. Here's what I like about it. You can lie in bed and you can look out the other window. Plus the light can come in over your head and here is a trick that I did to make sure that it feels like the bed is well suited with the width of the window. We actually cheated the width of the drapes a little bit. We got the rod extra long so that when the drapes are open, the line of the side of the bed lines up with the side of the drapes. I'm really happy with the way this turned out because I love symmetry. And so when I look at this room now, I always like when you walk into a room to be looking at the bed. That is how I think it looks best within the room. And that's what we've done here. Big game changer in this room was the addition of wallpaper. And I admit, I used a fair bit of wallpaper. In this house, I put wallpaper in the dining room. I put a mural in the kitchen. I put wallpaper in the powder room. I put wallpaper in Sam's room. I put wallpaper in Gemma's room. And you'll just have to see whether I used it anywhere else. But I think if you're dealing with a room that really doesn't have much going on, it's a great way to infuse an entirely new character, add some fun, and this wallpaper has a cream background with a sort of soft robin's egg blue pattern. Triangles and squares with just the lightest glint of kind of a champagne silver. It's not glitzy, it's not shimmery, it's neither too juvenile nor too mature. And so I just think that the minute the wallpaper went up in here, it really transformed this room. Behold this gorgeous wallpaper and set it on the path to where it is now. You may be thinking, very signature palette, Sarah. This is completely, you're doing what you like best, Sarah. This palette was chosen by Gemma. Oh my gosh. She wanted some accents of peach, so we have some small, soft pink bits that are infused here into the room. Lots of minty green and soft aqua blues because that's what she wanted. And this room overall to me feels really soothing and serene for a young teenage girl. And she'll be able to grow up and enjoy this room for a long time to come. Now, the other thing is that is funny that I should tell you is that from the 
the beginning, Gemma has been known to like to try out all the different rooms on the second floor. So when the kids first came in, we had four rooms designed and our goal was to let the two kids choose from four rooms which ones they wanted. And funny enough, they both chose the rooms we had designed with them in mind. This is my favorite one. <gasps> oh. oh my gosh. One of my favorite features in Gemma's room is the light fixture. And it's all about the teeny tiny details for me. This light fixture comes from the Color Cord Company. That's a mouthful, Color Cord Company, look it up. What they have is a variety of really fun lights that you can customize yourself. They have the cord for the lights in I think it's over 100 colors. Any color you can imagine, this is eucalyptus green. And then you can pair it with the shade of your choice, the canopy of your choice. And what we did here was we ordered a three light canopy. So that means there's three holes in the canopy. And then we ordered these string pendant lights also from the Color Cord Company. And you can hang them however you want. So we hung them at different heights and it has the same creamy tone that is in the background of the wallpaper. Feels kind of a little bit more modern yet boho at the same time. And it's a small detail, but it's really fun to be able to make your own light. So that's a fun little detail there. What else? Oh. You want to see the bathroom, right? Okay, so the kids bathroom had no mirrors. Can't remember if it had lights, but we funny, did. Funny looking lights. Funny looking lights. The light placement, I'm not sure if that's the appropriate place for this type of bathroom. No, either. it's totally wrong because no. they're too close. They need to be out here. The kids bathroom was about what can you do and how big a change can you make by doing very little. So all of the tile work was done. The tub was in place. Rather large shower. Huge. Does it spray water everywhere or does it not need a door? It doesn't need a door actually, it's just that big. You go all the way back here. All we did was we swapped out the vanity and we got a new vanity that came with the countertop. With the countertop, with the sinks, and if you are thinking that you want to do a swap out but you want to do it as simply as possible, check out this website. It's called Design Market and you can get a number of different colors. You can get a number of different door profiles. This is a really nice big double vanity. And before it was a creamy white vanity with a white countertop. It didn't really have any design impact and I just wanted to do something that felt more like a kid's bathroom. Then we used a really effective fabric. So this is a contemporary geometric fabric from Kravit. I'm a huge fan of this fabric. This is actually a remnant piece that's left over from the kitchen and dining room in Sarah Off the Grid season two. I always keep remnants because you never know when they're going to come in handy and check out how good those Romans look there. If you're looking for a paint color accent, you know, I'm always going to say, take a look at that pattern fabric and draw one of the colors directly from the fabric. That's exactly what I did here. And it is a soft blue gray. It's sort of a mid-tone. I'd say it's sort of halfway between the color of the vanity and it also ties in to the color of the Carrera marble that was already on the floor existing. Final few fun accents, a pair of swing arm lamps. Honestly, these were something I had in my storage locker from a long, long, long time ago. So don't ask me where they're from because I don't think you can buy these anymore, but you can find a similar version. And I think that they just look terrific on this wall because they bring the light further off the wall and you can direct it exactly where you want it, just above the sink. So don't feel you have to go with the classic bathroom sconce. You can put whatever kind of sconce in that you like, whatever suits you and your style, you can choose it. These mirrors, look how fun they are. They are asymmetrical. And then in order to hang them so that they didn't impact the sconces on the wall, again, we were dealing with what we had to work with here. We tipped them both in a little bit, which I think makes them look playful. I think that this bathroom should not be too serious. I think it now has color, it has texture, it has fun geometric pattern, and it has some great photographs hanging on the wall above the tub. So a few easy things you can do to perk up your bathroom. You wanna see how we perked up some other spaces? Well, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, cause coming up next, we have some more awesome spaces to share.